Welcome to part two of our journey of forging a forever family bond. As a reminder, please print and complete your slaveholder assessment form prior to the session. And if you have not already done so, we encourage you to attend part one to get the most out of this course. Two genealogists, one white, one black, both with a passion for research and family history, discover they are cousins through a common slaveholder ancestor. Together, forging a powerful research team, we developed a lifetime bond and a commitment to unite our family. Your instructors are Beverly Bevel and Rhonda Roderer, family historians and cousins. For part two, you will learn to balance the psychological ambivalence of discovery slaveholders within your family, utilize risk versus reward tools, and we will share our six lessons learned when navigating this journey. Here's a quick recap of part one. We discussed the Welsh genealogy of the Llewellyn family, along with slave documentations from slave schedules, wills and probate records, and bill of sale, we established that the Llewellyn family were slaveholders. Based upon existing records and DNA, we established that Beverly and I are fourth to fifth cousins with a common Welsh Llewellyn lineage. We discussed that slavery was common in our nation, and in fact, 49% of our founding fathers were slaveholders, and slavery was legal in all 13 colonies. Utilizing our slaveholder assessment tool and personal reflection, we discussed the potential of emotions and discomfort when dealing with the realities of possible slaveholders within your family lineage. Again, we highly recommend you utilize this tool to facilitate any further discussion on this topic. For some, this knowledge can be unsettling or foster further curiosity. Whichever the case, we encourage you to further investigate slaveholder discoveries. We hope you take the risk, just as Beverly and I did. Reach out to the descendants of former slaves as well as former slaveholders. Reap the rewards. And we took that risk. Now let's focus on our six lessons learned during our journey. Lesson one, create a project plan. As genealogists, we all know the value of say, staying focused and having a plan. But when meeting the expectations of two cousins who were strangers brought together under difficult and strange circumstances, agreeing upon a focus can be challenging. Your project plan should include dates, times, and context for each visit or research opportunity. You should prioritize research locations such as courthouses, libraries, museums, cemeteries, and interviews. Be prepared to divide and conquer. Bring plenty of change for the copy machine or bring a, a portable scanner. Purposeful communication. Clarity of personal goals, expectations, boundaries, budget, time frame, and research focus are key. Even expectations around downtime is important during your journey. Listen with the intent to learn. Listen to appreciate the cultural, emotional, and historical differences and needs. Judgments can be a communication blocker. Be clear about your intentions and expectations. It helps to be curious, not critical, about the other person's perspective. Inclusiveness. Being flexible and open to new ideas is a strength. Planning activities that consider special needs, such as dietary concerns, or the introduction of new friends and key individuals are important. Although planning is a great and necessary tool, remember, inflexibility 
may result in missed opportunities. And finally, including fun and creative activities help to break the monotony of research. Lesson number two, give way to the magic. Allow room for those hidden opportunities. And for us, the magic flowed like pennies from heaven. Yes, we actually found several pennies every single day of our trip, 16 in all. We just laughed and took it as a sign that our ancestors were telling us that we were on the right path and onto something really special. Magic, kismet, divine intervention, whatever you wanna call it, just watch for it and be amazed. The magic also came in the form of human instruments. What do I mean by that? Well, key, contribu key contributors actually helped us with our area research and our friendships with them continue today. In fact, we now have several local historians reaching out to us every time they encounter a Llewellyn in a record. Now, how cool is that? Our magic also led to meeting a roving reporter who captured our journey and turned it into front page news of Holly Springs, Mississippi, and later expanded to Ripley, Mississippi. It's now been over a year since Bev and I first met in that town, and that town still considers our story worthy of front page news. Consult your syllabus for the link to our extensive media coverage. Last but not least, there's always something truly magical about walking in the footsteps of your ancestors. Lesson number three, blind spots. Conquering misconceptions while unlocking the hidden truths. From our perspective as descendants of slaveholders and enslaved people, we learn to appreciate hidden truths about our ancestors. We expected twists and turns during this journey, but sometimes we were both taken by surprise and had to dig deep and analyze our own reactions and feelings. It was amazing to discover how cultural influenced our personal trip, truth, contributing to our own personal blind spots. Study the image. What do you see? Write it down on the assessment tool. And if you're viewing as a group, stop the tape and take time to share your vision. I saw a skeleton. I also saw two women dining near a lake. I saw a dock surrounded by the beautiful reflective water. And I saw a beautiful woman viewing her reflection in a mirror. Same image, but different perspectives. Hmm, why is that? Well, it's all about perspective. It's about points of reference or point of view. It's about what history taught you and how it shaped your views about people and life in general. Now, during our seven-day journey, our project plan included a visit to the burial site of William C. Llewellyn, former slaveholder and my three times great-grandfather. Ironically, through DNA, he is also related to Beverly through her mulatto, three times great-grandmother. Study this image. What do you see? Share what you see. Now, my vision and goal was to introduce Beverly and William C. and rejoice in their common ancestry. Bev, what did you see? What I saw were images of slave oppression, chained and captured people who were tortured. I saw injustice and peoples viewed as property or chattel under Jim Crow. All this played out in my imagination like a TV drama or a movie about slavery. Why do you think there was so much difference in our perspectives? What attributed to Rhonda's vision? What attributed to my vision? Who's right? Who's wrong? The answer is, it's all about perspective. And that many things can be true at the same time. Here's a third perspective, same image. What do you think his will saw? How about his children and family? Has anything now changed about your perspective of this image? 
Now let's return to the slaveholder assessment tool, part two, and review your slaveholder emotions. What emotions do you think I was experiencing as I, as I stared at the grave of my ancestral slaveholder? You can see that the typical enslaved person's reactions are very similar to mine. You might also be surprised that several of the slaveholders and enslaved persons emotional emotions are identical. And as we learned in part one, emotions can trigger a fight or flight reaction causing you to respond in survival mode. I was unexpectedly traumatized because it is extremely rare for African Americans to come face to face with their slaveholders. There are theories regarding generational trauma and its effects on the offspring of once enslaved African Americans. And you can refer to your syllabus for more information about that. Another major challenge during our journey was to accept and respect one another's perspectives regarding slavery. Working through and respecting one another's cultural norms and practices was crucial. Lesson number four, healing. The institution of slavery has left a physical, psychological, sociological, and emotional charge within this country. It may be that we have more in common than we think and that making a plan to respectfully address this trauma can be a pathway for healing. Healing for both sides of slavery and its fallout. Each of us can play a role in this healing process. As we reach out to one another and have an open dialogue, use empathy, not sympathy. Empathy can be defined as your pain in my heart. With no judgment, just seek to understand, learn and respect one another's experiences. We've emphasized many times that typical American history curriculum is silent or lacking in this painful era. Expand your historical IQ by learning about the contributions of all cultures. Research and share family documents, including those crucial oral histories. Africans were enslaved in this country as early as 1619, long before the Declaration of Independence and the Civil War. Remember, Official records were rarely kept on slaves prior to the 1870 census. Generations of information are missing for those who were once enslaved. Recent unrest and political events demonstrate that African Americans continue to suffer and to seek justice and equality in this century. One just does not get over slavery when faced with its daily consequences for more than 400 years. Lesson number five, danger, uncovering the truth. Even with the best plans, not all family members or friends understand or will support your journey of uncovering slavery. Exposing secrets or hidden truths may be uncomfortable for some. Be patient. Not everyone is on the same page at the same time. They may just need time to digest this new truth. You may find that doors can open at any time. Just as with any danger sign, you approach some situations with caution. We realize that no amount of personal planning can completely undo years of learned behavior about race, protocol, and prejudices. Again, it's a process, be patient. We entered this journey aware of potential obstacles. To be successful, we chose to identify our collective risk and develop a plan to mitigate those risks. For example, essential to our plan was meeting the other Llewellyn cousins who could possibly contribute to our family story 
and history. You can see some of the risks we identified as possible barriers to our mission. Number six, our final lesson, risk versus reward. There are several great problem solving and risk mitigation tools to help analyze and minimize risk. Whether they're perceived or real, creating a strategy to move forward is critical to achieve your goals. Force fill analysis. Force fill analysis is a tool developed by Kurt Lewin in 1951. It's a powerful way to identify or mitigate problem, mitigate risk, problem solve, and develop a plan for success. This tool is commonly used in corporations and leadership programs across the world. You can refer to your syllabus for more detail. Step one of this process, identify the challenge or the goal. In our example, the challenge was meeting the white Llewellyn cousins of Ripley, Mississippi for the first time. Step two, identify the restrainers or those items working against achieving your goal of meeting the Ripley cousins for the first time. In our example, you see several restrainers in red. We've given each restrainer a point value, one point being least impactful and 10 points being most impactful. Step three, identify the drivers or those items supporting the goal. Again, assign a point value from one to 10 and in the model, the drivers are green. Notice from our example, the sum of the restrainers outweigh the sum of the drivers. It would appear that our goal of meeting the Ripley cousins may not be easily achieved or a major obstacle. As we shared earlier, it's all about perspective. Step four, one of the restrainers with the largest negative impact and point value of 10 was Rhonda being a stranger to the Ripley, Mississippi Llewellyn Cousins. So let's focus on that restrainer as our example. Well, you can ask, what's the next step? Generate a plan to reduce or eliminate the obstacles for Rhonda as a stranger. To achieve that, we can eliminate the restrainer, reduce the point value of the restrainer, or make the restrainer a driving force that supports our goal instead of working against the goals. The green arrows are the drivers or steps Rhonda took to reduce or eliminate the impact of her being a stranger to the Llewellyn Cousins. Rhonda spent weeks calling and introducing herself to the Ripley cousins. Her communication was a huge factor in building trust. Sharing her family documents with the Ripley cousins and vice versa gained her credibility as an interested and involved cousin. Rhonda spent hours and days chatting with other Llewellyn cousins who already had a relationship with the Ripley cousins. Again, building that credibility. And most importantly, she set up our introduction over lunch, providing a neutral and festive environment for our first meeting. And guess what? Mission accomplished. Plan executed, risk mitigated, and the rewards definitely outweighed the risk. Llewellyn Cousins Unite. They all welcomed Beverly into the family with open arms. And although our journey continues today, it is not without challenges. We continue to utilize our six lessons learned to strengthen our relationship and expand our reach across the entire Llewellyn family. The list of tools, techniques, documents, and resources, along with the six lessons learned, we have, we have been very critical for building this forever family bond. And an unforeseen magical benefit 
has been the creation of the enslaved Llewellyn family crest. This crest with the symbolic lions honors my Welsh heritage while paying homage to those Africans who sacrificed through slavery. Our story continues through a future Llewellyn family reunion, the establishment of the Llewellyn Project, a center for racial reconciliation and community development, and the expansion of our family tree as we continue to forge a forever family bond. Thank you for watching our presentation and for more great content, check out the Roots Tech page.